At Bullington Tower, there rests Carl Jung's infamous stone. When reflecting on his life, Jung commented that, I need not have written any books. It is all on the stone. This quote by Jung shows the immense importance of the stone and the meaning it had on him. The stone, of course, is largely alchemical in meaning, as we will discuss, and links the unity of opposites. Jung would later expound upon this in his book Mysterium Conjunctionis, or The Mystery of the Conjunction, but for now, let's stick to the stone. The first side of the stone is fairly straightforward, and contains a quote from the 16th century alchemic work entitled The Rosary of the Philosophers, commenting on the Philosopher's Stone, and reads, Here stands the mean and comely stone, tis very cheap in price. The more it is despised by fools, the more loved by the wise. Thus, the stone for Jung, in a sense, is his own philosopher's stone of sorts. There is also a dedication at the bottom which reads, in memory of his 75th birthday, C.G. Jung, out of gratitude, made and set up in the year 1950. The second side of the stone, which features the homunculus Telosphorus, reads, Time is a child, playing like a child, playing a board game, the kingdom of the child. This is Telosphoros, who roams through the dark regions of this cosmos, and glows like a star out of the depths. He points the way to the gates of the sun, and to the land of dreams. Telosphoros, of course, is the child god of healing, which is fitting, as the Philosopher's Stone is the panacea that cures and purges all ills, able to transmute metaphorical or psychic lead into gold. Telosphoros also means completion, which is fitting as the Philosopher's Stone, in unifying all things, is the magnum opus or final great work of the philosophers or alchemists. The line, he points the way to the gates of the sun and to the land of dreams, is from Homer's Odyssey and is specifically in reference to Hermes. In addition, the symbol of Mercury or Quicksilver is imprinted on Telosphoros himself as he points above with one arm and below with another, reflective of the alchemic credo as above so below. For all intents and purposes, Telosphoros is Hermes or Mercury. Mercury, of course, is one of the three primes in alchemy, representative of spirit. The other two are sulfur, which is representative of the soul, and salt, which is representative of the body. Mercury, of course, is the name for Hermes, representing the combination of the masculine and the feminine, and is used to symbolize the unity of opposites, above and below. In fact, Hermes caught a Zeus staff itself was believed to have awakened those who slept and sent to sleep those who were still awake, as well as return the dead back to life, linked to an alchemist's sense of immortality. If we look closely, we can also see how the stone forms a mandala. It depicts the sun and Jupiter on the left being representative of the masculine, and the moon and Venus on the right representing the feminine. Saturn is represented in the upper part, while Mars is represented in the lower part of the mandala itself. The mandala also contains four rivers, but one of which is drawn different than the others. To Jung, this was in reference to the axiom of Maria, which is a precept in alchemy, which states, one becomes two, two becomes three, and out of the third comes the one as the fourth. Though this seems cryptic, it can easily be compared to the image of the triketra, in which three vesica pisces overlap each other, forming a knot which interlinks all three as one. Thus the saying, from the fourth comes one, as the fourth is used to unify all three. The fourth is one, representing unity. This could also be why Jung only inscribed sayings on three of the four sides of the cube, leaving the other blank, as all three are unified by the fourth, which is one. The third side of the stone can be read as such. I am an orphan alone, nevertheless I am found everywhere. I am one, but opposed to myself. I am youth and old man at one and the same time. I have known neither father nor mother, because I have had to be fetched out of the deep like a fish, or fell like a white stone from heaven. In woods and mountains I roam, but I am hidden in the innermost soul of man. I am mortal for everyone, yet I am not touched by the cycle of aeons. In both quotes, we can note the coinciding of opposite characteristics, noting the alchemical underlinings of the script itself. In short, we see the stone is not just any stone, 
but a philosopher's stone, coinciding and unifying opposites. To Jung, this was the true self, which rested in bringing the unconscious to a conscious state, merging that which was below with that which was above. And only in that unity of below and above, of unconscious and conscious, could the self be established.